Good afternoon. This is the third biggest mistake that people make to mess up their dogs. Right, Biggie? I love my dog. By the way, if you haven't met her yet, that's Lickety Split. She's gonna be down here um, on my lap, so I'll pull her up for some entertainment uh, when you guys get bored. So anyway, this today, this video is, I'm fixing my camera, about the biggest mistakes humans make to mess up their dogs. Today is mistake, hi, hi. Today is mistake number three. And it's a talking day. So some days I'm gonna be doing tutorials um, with training, with different dogs and stuff like that. But today is about talking. And I love to talk. And the better you get to know me, the more you're going to understand how much I love to talk. That's thunder. We just had a massive thunderstorm. I mean, I saw lightning striking the ground in my pasture with my horses. It was really scary. They were seeking shelter um, under the trees. I love you. So it's a beautiful day. The birds are out and the storm is gone. <laughs> my dog wants to be pet. <laughs> so let's talk today about mistake number three. And mistake number three is calling your dog to come to you when you can't let him go back to what he was doing. Yeah, it sounds weird. It's basically my whole philosophy of training, okay? We can also look at it as calling your dog to come to you when you need him. Because when you need him, it means he lost what he was doing. So if your dog's playing with another dog and you just say, you know, Sammy, come. And he comes running and then you take him away. Even if you give him a treat, he lost what he was doing, correct? So over time, the dog learns, oh, every time mommy calls me to come, I lose friends, squirrels, chasing a deer, crossing the street to eat some trash or garbage or chicken or whatever's across the street. Every time you call your dog to come because you need him to come to you, he loses what he's doing. And then you have people that say, well, no, actually, no, I give my dog a treat every time he comes. Well, they weigh it out. I mean, they know they're gonna get that piece of jerky or whatever they're gonna get, but they also know that over time, they always lose what it is they were doing. So training is a way of life. It's kind of like working out or diet or exercise, you know, you don't just do it for a day and then, okay, great, I'm skinny, I'm in shape, I'm gonna go eat donuts and pizza every night. It's a way of life. If you're going to be healthy, you have to commit to a way of life. And it's the same thing with dog training. If you want a dog that comes when you call him, you have to commit to a way of life that weighs 99% in favor of training the dog to come and 1% of actually calling your dog to come because you need him to come. So 99% of the time you should be doing fun games and training exercises in non-distracting areas with nothing going on, calling your dog to come to you for no reason at all. And then you let him go back to what he was doing. So the dog learns to double his rewards. And if you play this game very carefully, which I call the come and go back game, it's come to me and then immediately get a treat and go back using your release command, which we're gonna talk about, immediately go back to whatever it was you were doing. So in the house, when there's nothing much going on, and that's what I call working in a non-distracting environment, you will teach your dog the name game, what his name means, how to come when called, all this fun stuff that we do with treats. So let's just say he's in a minor state of distraction. He's, he's you know, sniffing something or, you know, looking in another room. You call him to come, you give him a treat, and you immediately let him go back again. 
If you train your dog like that all the time for no reason at all, it's much more likely that when you need your dog to come and you call your dog to come, he will. But the problem is we overuse the come command. We are constantly, constantly, constantly calling our dog to come. Come away from this, come away from that, or come. Better yet, we call him to come and we do something the dog doesn't like, like clip its nails, groom it, or whatever. So this ties into my last video a little bit um, with the name game because we also misuse the dog's name, right? We yell at the dog with his name when he's doing something bad. We, um, again, you, you call the dog to come and it's the vet or a bath or whatever. But this game specifically is about the come command. It's not about teaching your dog his name. It's about teaching your dog that when I recall you with your command, which has been trained, I will always let you go back to what you were doing. So you, you gain a liver treat and you get to go back to your friend. So a really great game to correct the problem that most dogs have because most dogs already ignore you. There are my horses behind me. You see them? There's Demira and Nasdaq. Those are my horses. See how wet they are? They survived the storm. And I bet, oh, they're getting some water. All right. So what you want to think about again in training is the phases of training. So we have training, which involves treats, cookies, training in non-distracting environments to make training the number one most exciting thing. So that's how your come command should be trained. The mistake is people get their dog and start calling their dog to come to them right away. They start calling their dog to come and the dog doesn't even know the come command. They don't, they, there's no way they know it. They just hear a loud voice and they assume it's them. And then you say, oh, what a good puppy man. And it's so much fun. So we kind of assume that our dog understands the come command, but again, you need to actively train the come command. So I'm gonna have more videos and more tutorials that are dog training tutorials that are going to show you how to train the come command. But the psychology behind the come command is one of the biggest mistakes in all of dog training, which is don't call your dog to come if it's gonna end something fun. That's it. Don't call your dog to come if it's gonna mean you lose that thing. So then the next thing is people say, well, how do I call him? How do I get my dog when I need him? I mean, how do I get my dog to me then? You go, you take your leash, you walk across the yard and you hook him to the leash and you say this way, let's go. Couldn't you say this way, let's go? Instead of like shaking a bag of cookies and saying, come. And then you get your dog and he lost that thing he was doing. The, the, Dogs, the number one problem in all of dog training is my dog won't come when called. That is the number one problem. And I'm talking about dogs that are faced with such severe distractions that, good luck. Do you know what I mean? So you want to give your dog every chance, okay? And whether you're a positive reinforcement trainer only or a balanced trainer, because I do believe in balanced training, which means um, at a certain point in training when the dog is really well versed in his commands, 80% minimum standard performance, meaning the dog has been trained, trained among distractions. The dog absolutely knows his name. He knows how to come when called. We've reinforced it. We, we've, we've shown that um, you know eight or nine times out of 10, he will come when called. He understands what it means. He has a position that he, that he sits in or touches when he gets to your body. So it's a trained command. It's not just a chance command. Like, oh, I just, you know, I just say my dog's name and he comes running over. Mm. How's that working out for you? When there's a deer running across your pasture and your dog is chasing it. Probably not gonna come when you call him. So the games that I give, and especially if you go and check out Inspired by Dogs with Dina, inspiredbydogswithdina.com has my online training course and it goes over all the games, how to teach um, the entire foundation to your dog from sit, down, stay, come, heal, leave it, no, release command and all of that. So if you're interested in that, go to inspiredbydogswithdina.com and look at the essential skills and games course. Here on this channel is free advice, the most important free advice you'll ever get because it's not about what you do with your dog. Well, I just give him a cookie. I, I call him to come over and come here, 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 boy. You know, here, Sam, and I give him a cookie. 
But the problem with that is as soon as the dog figures out he lost the other thing, he's gonna stop coming to you. And he's gonna stop coming to you if you ever call him to discipline him or use his name to discipline him. Never, never do those things. He's also gonna stop coming to you if you don't reward him. So there's, there's a ton of different things going on here, but the, the main thing I want you to think about is creating a come and go back game. Okay, so the solution to this mistake, calling your dog when you need him to come. One of the biggest mistakes in dog training. I always train my come command. I train it, train it, train it, train it, train it, meaning I'm in the house, non-distracting area, or I'm in the yard, nothing much going on. I've got the Frisbee, Splitty come, and I run and she gets it and tug and then we swim. So Splitty come means like you hit the jackpot. To my dogs, they're not losing anything when I call them to come. They're gaining the world. So how have you been using your come command? Have you been calling your dog when you need him to come? Then you're actually ruining your come command. You're poisoning your come command. You need to think about that deposits in the bank thing that I talked about in my last mistake, which was not teaching your dog his name. What does the name mean? Gotta watch the other video to find out. Because there's a systematic progression in how we train a dog and create attention. I have hardly ever really called my dog to come to me because she's always with me because I've created an engaged spirited dog. She has spirit, she has drive, she loves to chase things, but she would rather be with me and play with me than run off. But when I call her, I always let her go back to what she was doing. So we gradually progress this game to a high level of difficulty. So let's say she's chasing another dog, full speed sprinting. I can call her to come. She will stop so fast. You, you can see smoke, <laughs> like really, she stops fast, rips back to me, gets a treat and I say break and I release her right back into the play. And that is precisely why my dog will come to me in extreme distractions. And we're not talking about <laughs> I have a big spot on my shirt. I just saw that. It's really embarrassing. I was drinking an espresso, which by the way, I think I'm going to get my espresso. Hold on a second. Proof. I put whipped cream on my espresso. It's delicious. And the problem with that is, oh, she doesn't like the coffee. Usually, if it's just the whipped cream, she likes it. This is probably why I have whipped cream on my shirt. So, Mmm, really delicious. <laughs> Isn't it delicious? So I want you guys to think about how you're using your come command and you can reverse it now. You can reverse it now. Number one, stop calling your dog to come. When you need to go somewhere, just simply go and get him. Three, name what it is you're doing. Like, let's go to the car or let's go to the vet or, you know, let's take a bath. Dogs learn these words, believe me, they do. If you start to name everything you do, then life becomes more predictable for your dog. It's not that your dog speaks English, but he makes associations. So if every time you take a bath, you say, hey, we're getting a bath, let's get a bath. And then as you're giving him a bath, you say bath, bath. They, they pretty soon, when you say the word bath, <laughs> they run away from you, right? Well, that's what you're doing with your come command because you say, you tell your dog to come and then you do something he doesn't like, which can be as simple as he was sniffing. He was sniffing a rabbit or, you know, he was on the trail of some squirrel. And because you called him and put him back in the house because you need to leave, he knows inherently that he lost that squirrel. So next time you say his name, he almost has that response like, I better run the other way because Last time she called me, I, I got put in the kennel because they had to leave for dinner, you know, whatever. When you have to put your dog in the crate, even if he loves the crate, I wouldn't use his name. I'd say, go kennel. Ready? Go kennel. I love the word ready. Ready. My dog loves the word ready because she knows what is good. That's the response of like, what's it gonna be? Good or bad, right? Ready? Ready. Ready? Touch. Chin. 
Yeah. So I like having words that can get my dog's attention without it always being her name. Because if the name and the come command mean everything, come for this, come for that, come for your dinner, come to be put in the kennel, come to be clip the nails, come to, you know, and again, it ties very closely to my last video. But if your name, if, you're, if the come command means everything or anything, then the come command means nothing. Keep it pure, keep it simple. That is one loud frog. I promise it was a frog. <laughs> um, anyway, it's kind of exciting, but it's the philosophy of all training. So you can almost look at all commands have to be more valuable and better during training than what the dog is doing at the time, always, until you get to the proofing phase. The proofing phase is for another conversation. It's a very vocal frog, he has a lot to say. The proofing phase is about correcting the dog that is fully, has been fully trained and now decides to blow you off. And there are distractions big enough for any dog to say, Nope, not coming. Squirrel, see you later. You don't want that. You can set your dog up for success. But remember in the proofing phase, you really do have to set your dog up for failure, for the worst case scenario, and train him that if he doesn't come back, there is a consequence. So we can talk about what that is. This is not the video or the time or the place to get into that philosophy. And it's not for everybody. I think it should be, because if you don't have a consequence, then your dog is in danger, okay? So this all relates to the, the come command and the, there are other mistakes in there that I'm gonna talk about in future videos. But today's mistake, and don't you forget it, today's mistake is calling your dog to come to you when you need him. Only call your dog to you for training purposes. Only call your dog to come to you when you're more exciting and you have something better than what he's doing, period. Every time you call your dog to come to you because you need him to come to you, he loses what he's doing and you poison the command. You ruin your come command every time you do that. Stop it, stop doing that. That's all, I told you. I have a lot to say about a simple thing. So this concludes mistake number three. We're gonna get really detailed. There are 101 mistakes that I'm going to be doing. I'm doing a mistake a day for 101 days. There was going to be a whole encyclopedia of mistakes. And through the mistakes, I also give you the secrets to fix the dog. So the secret today was the come and go back game. Come to me and go back to whatever you're doing. You can do it on a long line. You can take a long line out, 30 foot line, 50 foot line, retractable leash, I don't care. Let your dog go freak out and sniff something, call him to come back. If he doesn't use the leash, good boy, good boy, good boy, and send him back again. So he goes, oh, oh, I'm not gonna leave. You mean I can come to you, get a cookie, and go back and chase the squirrel? That's what you want, don't you want that? Your dog wants that. Be predictable. If you need your dog, go and get your dog. Get a leash, walk to your dog, hook him up and say, let's go this way. Let's go home, go car, inside. <laughs> All my dogs are looking at me because they know those words. Do you know what I mean? But why use the name and call your dog to come when it's over? You're poisoning the command. I think you guys get it. Cheers. I'll see you tomorrow for mistake number four. If you haven't watched the first three mistakes, you need to go back and watch them because there's a chronological order. I'm sure I'll forget something and it'll be out of order and I'll say, well, this one's actually more important than the last one, but they're all important. And then the foundation, because it's not what you do that makes or breaks, that makes a dog, that makes a great dog. It's not what you do, it's the mistakes you're making. So you can be a great trainer, but if you don't understand the psychology, the philosophy and the way dogs work, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you can do. 
in a non-distracting area. It's about the other, the other stuff that you don't think about. So happy training. I'll be back on tomorrow for mistake number four.